It's a natural tendency to believe that the world as we know it will remain as we know it, and that any change that does come will be gradual. However, history has shown over and over that this is a false assumption. This tendency, often referred to as the normalcy bias, prevents people from seeing and understanding the immense forces of causality which build up as a society approaches a cataclysmic change. The U.S. economy is headed for a collapse. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate why this collapse is inevitable, and I'm going to show you evidence that the U.S. government is actively preparing for this event right now. The U.S. national debt is currently at about $16.7 trillion, and it's been growing by an average of $3.87 billion a day. This is an inconceivable amount of money. The human mind just isn't capable of registering what numbers of this size actually mean. So let's take a look at a visual representation. This is $100. This is $10,000 in $100 bills. This is $100 million. It's also about how much 3,500 Americans would make with a salary of $28,500 a year. And this is 16 trillion. Again, these are stacks of brand new $100 bills. And guess what? This number is dwarfed by the unfunded liabilities that are estimated to stand between 86 trillion and 123 trillion, depending on who you ask. To add to the mix, we have an estimated $1.2 quadrillion in debt-based derivatives still in the banking system. Now, I couldn't find a graphic representation of one quadrillion dollars, but a quadrillion is 1,000 trillion. So it's 1,000 times this. Like I said, these are inconceivable figures here. This is not fixable. Those who try to convince you otherwise are not misinformed. They're lying to you. One way or another, we're headed for a breaking point. This is the inevitable result of having a debt-based currency. For more information on this topic, please watch my video entitled, Why a Dollar and Euro Collapse is Guaranteed. The U.S. government sees this coming and they are preparing. The way that they're preparing, though, should make the hair stand up on the back of your neck. You might remember not too long ago I did a report on the billions of rounds of hollow point bullets and buckshot that the Department of Homeland Security has on order. Perhaps you thought this was a crazy conspiracy theory. Well, if Forbes is willing to acknowledge it, is that mainstream enough for you? Last week, I put out a detailed report covering a leaked government document entitled Internment and Resettlement Operations, or FM3-39.40 which clearly outlines the plans for military internment camps for U.S. citizens. It specifically mentions the use of psychological operations officers within the camps to isolate activists and to pacify the population. The link to the video and the document itself is in the description. And then there's this. Well, we have our, our big vehicle out here. It's an armored vehicle. Uh, it's an AMRAP vehicle. It's mine resistant, ambush protected is what it stands for. This is what we use to deliver our, our, um, our team to uh, high-risk warrant services. This is the only entry in the vehicle here, so all the operators, we've, uh, we've modified our particular vehicle to have the skids on the sides so that we can uh, have operators on the side and just get off the vehicle uh, from, the, from the sides. Makes for a very fast deployment, that's what we try to do. Um, if there's an issue while we're out serving a warrant service or something like that, we can shelter in place with this and then go into the surrounding call out operations uh, inside of here. We can generally get about 10 or 11 operators in here, very tight, but we can do it. So we get them in there. Um, we have the same, same on this side, we have a skid on this side as well. We can put uh, four, four or five operators on here with the shield and they deploy off this side. Uh, the team commander, which is myself, I'll stand in the MRAP and uh, provide overwatch for the team while they're making entry into the house. This glass right here is multiple layers of, uh, of glass. It's about, I would say about that thick. It's got multiple layers in there and it will stop uh, up to a 50 caliber round, the window will. So. It uh, provides very good protection for us. We have gun ports in here, so we can actually we can actually shoot from within the vehicle. Um, you may think it's pretty loud, but actually it's not too bad. Uh, but we do have gun ports there and in the back, and there are two, two, two on the side as well. Our team is stationed in El Paso. That's where we're from. We have a team right now, about 17 certified members, and a couple green team guys that are trying to get on the team. And we cover the entire New Mexico state and West Texas, all the way out from El Paso to Midland. And that's our, our, our area of operations. Now we are a national team, so we can be called to go anywhere in the United States and assist other teams with uh, whatever they have pending. It should be obvious that this isn't law enforcement. These are preparations for war. Combine all of this with the NDAA of 2012 and 2013, which give the military the right to kill or detain anyone anywhere in the world without a trial, and you've got the makings of a full-out military dictatorship. Powers that be have no intention of becoming the powers that work. Their system might be falling apart, but they aren't about to just let the people choose what comes next. Now, if you're a rational, 
intelligent person who's willing to look at reality, then this information is bound to be frightening. For some people, it'll be so overwhelming that they'll just push it out of their minds and do their best to avoid thinking about it. Others will understand that this is irresponsible and will want to do something. But what? Well, let's start by using the process of elimination and discard the options that clearly won't do any good. Option number one, vote the bums out. That's not going to work, guys. The elections are rigged. The entire system is corrupt to the core. This should be obvious to you by now. You have zero chance of getting your country back through politics at this point. To pretend otherwise is just delusional. Option number two, hold protests or fill out petitions. Come on, seriously? The criminals running the system don't care what you think. Your petitions mean nothing to them. Stop groveling at their feet. Option number three, launch a violent revolution. Okay, as popular as this option may be with some people, the fact of the matter is the public is not psychologically or logistically prepared for this. If a small handful of civilians armed only with rifles and handguns try to take on the federal government right now, the results would be disastrous. Anyone with urban combat experience, especially veterans of Iraq or Afghanistan, can attest to this. So what does that leave us? I'm going to describe three steps that would change the game if the people could bring themselves together. This is not a command or recommendation. It's just my analysis of what would work. Step number one, cut the federal government and the bankers off financially. Bleed them dry on every level, meaning stop every single payment going in their direction. If you aren't willing to go cold turkey in this regard, organizing a file for extension, day of action, for example, this April, might be a start. Make no mistake though, to really bring these crooks to their knees, you're gonna have to play hardball. Step number two, occupy and blockade the Congress. Do not let these criminals through the doors. Congress and the Senate are guilty of high treason. The most lenient penalty that they should face for the crimes that they have committed would be a life behind bars. Merely preventing them from going to work would be beyond merciful. But it would be a start. Step number three, call for the military to break the chain of command and refuse to fight in these wars in Africa and the Middle East. Call for them to come home and protect the people from its real enemies. If soldiers want to fight for freedom, they need to disband the Congress the executive and the kangaroo courts that some like to call the judicial system and bring the financial cartel which is really running this show to justice. Sound extreme? Yes, it's extreme, but that's what it would take. Short of this, America's headed for an overt East German style lockdown when the economy unravels. This isn't something that's coming 20 or 30 years from now. The scale and the pace of the government's preparations should make that clear. Those who have young children and who don't want anything to do with this insanity would be advised to have a plan B meaning you need to make the necessary preparations to leave the country on short notice. You should have a passport for every member of your family. You should have enough cash to get you out of the country. You need to research the geography, the politics, and the immigration policies of several countries. If the country you're looking at speaks a foreign language, then you need to start learning that language. This is really just the bare minimum. Listen, I don't want to look at this any more than you do. I don't want to see my country go down this road. And to be honest, I don't know what our chances are of changing the outcome. All I know is that we have to Try. We've got to wake people up to what's coming. If we're going to win, it's only going to be possible if we reach critical mass. If you feel this message needs to get to the public, then please share this video by every means possible. Share it to Facebook, to Twitter, to your friends via email. If you want more content like this, please subscribe to this channel, Storm Clouds Gathering, here on YouTube. For bonus content and updates, follow us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Storm Clouds Gathering, on Twitter at Collapse Updates, and of course our website, stormcloudsgathering.com. Also, we're doing our live broadcast Wednesday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern, which is tonight here on YouTube, so be sure to check in for that.